the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest for you today, all the way from the West Coast, Ko Sakar. How are you, Ko? I'm doing excellent, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So um, are you in LA currently, or are you in Phoenix or San Diego? Where are you located today? I'm hanging out in Phoenix today. Very nice. I'm from uh, Tucson myself, believe it or not. I'm not in Tucson right now. I'm in... Uh, I'm actually in Orlando, Florida at the moment, but I usually do the show, as most of my listeners know, from West Palm Beach, but I did spend 10 years in Arizona, and it is a wonderful state, great place to live. Boy, I can't, you can't beat that year-round weather, especially this time of year. So, you can beat the year-round weather. It's a little bit better in Southern California year-round because, you know, the Arizona summers are hot. Yeah, yeah I agree, but that summer, man, that summer can get, can get warm, but you know what? It feels good to me. When you get my age, that hot, hot, non-humid air feels pretty good on the skin. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Co, I'll ask you this. Were you the kid that was tugging on his parents' pant leg when you were little saying, hey, mom, dad, I want to be a realtor when I get older. I want to get into real estate. Or were you like the rest of us where we just kind of fell into it later in life? I would say I kind of fell into it, right? I'm actually originally an engineer. I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer. My background in education is unrelated to real estate. However, it tends to come in handy these days because a lot of my clients are tech people. So they can relate to me. I can relate to them in that particular regard. But no, my, my, my pathway was in this direction. And lo and behold, now I'm headed over here. It's, it's quite the drastic shift. Yeah. So what, just what, what prompted that? Was there just a point in your life where you said, hey, you know what? engineering wasn't for me. And man, do I love homes? How did, how did that progress? What's that story? You know, I was an engineer in the semiconductor industry working away. I was investing in real estate, right? I had a couple of uh, interesting pseudo mentors that pointed me in the direction of long-term wealth. The best way to get there is with your own real estate investments. Sure. And eventually I got my own license. Uh, I didn't want to bother anybody else. I wanted to handle the, you know, viewing the properties, doing the analysis all on my own. My coworkers, we're like, wait a minute, you're into real estate. We trust you. You've got your real estate license. Help me buy this. Help me sell this. Yeah. So in a very short period of time, what was my own investment scheme turned into a bit of a hobby, turned into a hobby that paid pretty well, eventually more than my day job. So it was time to take that hobby full time. It was kind of right. destiny. And one, one could not have predicted that destiny a few years before that. You kind of get to the point where... I do know this for myself. It's just a corollary between you and I. Um, I get kind of tired of helping people, you know, uh, make the biggest purchase of their life. And I never got paid for it. You know, I spend a lot of time helping people and make that big investment, whether it's their home they live in or, or whatever it was, until finally you decide, hey, you know what? I should start getting paid for this. So, yeah. You know, it's interesting, right? Obviously, we get paid for what we do. You, you put money aside, right? It's always client-focused, client-first, client-based services. You take care of the client. You take care of the clientele, all the clients. The money takes care of itself. You can't have short-term blinders focused on the dollars. The right. dollars come over the long haul from continued good service. Yeah, great advice. I mean, yeah, that's, a, that's a great way, you know, mantra to live by for sure. Money will always be there, right? It kind of comes and goes, and, but helping people is where it all ends. I always say when I can wake up in the morning and feel good about what I do and helping folks, yeah. that pays for itself right there. Without a doubt. So, you know, we kind of talked about how you got started, which I think is a magnificent story. So tell me a little bit about where you're at now. And I know there's a couple of different locations you work through in Phoenix, Los Angeles, or in uh, Orange County, San Diego, both phenomenal or all three phenomenal cities I spent a lot of time in uh do you work consistently in those areas or, or how, do, how does that work out for you absolutely work consistently in those areas 
What I find, uh, first of all, people are like, how do you manage those locations all by yourself? You're one human. Those are vast areas, right? I have I have excellent team members that assist me, right? I don't have an army of people, if you will, but the people that I do have, the folks that I do have are, number one, they're available. Number two, they're credible. Number three, they're honest. And they assist me where I physically cannot be, right? Now, that being said, every transaction my name goes on, I am handling that transaction. Whether it's a buyer, whether it's a seller, I'm doing the analysis, I'm doing the negotiations, I'm doing the marketing, et cetera. Where these folks help me out a ton is with boots on the ground, right? Yeah. They can go show properties, they can go put up this sign, they can let the photographer in, they can let the videographer in, et cetera, et cetera. My clientele, right? My Southern California people, typically, and there are exceptions, they will buy their primary residence in LA, in OC, in San Diego. Maybe they will buy investment homes there, but quite often those folks that buy the primary residence in SoCal buy multiple rental properties in Arizona. My Arizona clients, my Phoenix clients, of course, live in Arizona, buy their primary residences here in Phoenix. Um, they don't usually buy in California. The exception is some of these tech people that are moving back and forth and get relocated, right? So in certain cases, I'm involved with somebody selling a property in Arizona, buying in California, and I help them handle both sides of it, which just smooths the process. They don't have to deal with two different people. Right. Wow, that's nice. That's a machine. That's what I call that. All the cogs moving together, right? I try, my friend. I try. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, you know, let's talk. So we talked about how you got started and then, you know, we kind of talked about how you, um, I'll never say juggle because you got it down. You're not juggling, you know, you're making no. it work. Uh, yeah. You're making it work. And so, you know, we talked about how you operate there. So let's talk about the future a little bit. Um, you do have a team. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your team, of course, but um, are there one, three, five-year plans for this team? I mean, what, what are we looking at in the future, Co? Yeah, you know, the funny thing is you can map out what's going to happen five years from now. And a lot of those things are outside of our control. Interest rates might do this. Interest rates might do this. You might have a recession. You might have a boom. A lot of these things are out of our control, right? What um, I'm actively doing, we're increasing our presence in the quote unquote luxury sphere, right? So it doesn't mean we stop selling the 400, 500, 600K homes. We sell those homes all day. We love servicing those clients, but the four or five, 600K buyer is often also the $4 million buyer. They're just buying four or five, 600K rental homes, right? right? What are we trying to do to better service and better present ourselves in the luxury market, right? You just got to put the product out there. So, so if you go to our social media, we're blasting it with product that is out there, multi-million dollar properties, excellent videos, excellent photos of these properties. Our team is holding open houses at the luxury home. So if the, the humans want to stop by and see the property, the product in person, they certainly can. And speaking of open houses, I guess that wasn't a huge focus for us in the past. But now, especially with the luxury properties, um, you know, all my folks on social media, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they're going to see us hosting open houses at one, two, three, four, five million dollar properties over time. Again, increased exposure to that particular market. A lot of move up buyers, they weren't a 500, 600K home. They've got a bunch of equity now. They want to upgrade. They want to buy something for 1.2 million. They can right. cash out 400K as a nice down payment from the first house, for example. So really one of the main foci, I don't know if that's a word, but one of the main foci is expanding our reach to more of the luxury sphere. Well, how does that look then? I mean, in your, in, we haven't even discussed marketing really, or how you find clients, listings, buyers, whatever it might be, investors. So I guess we could start there and then dovetail that into, you know, how you do step it up. Because I think every realtor and, you know, a lot of li our listeners are realtors, of course, and every realtor would like to know, I'd like to step up. I'm selling 400, 500, $600,000 homes, but I really want to get into that million dollar plus market. I want to get into that luxury market. You know, what? It, but maybe what's your secret sauce, if you can give that away, what's your secret sauce for doing that? So for the realtors out there, especially in Arizona and Southern California that have been trying to do these things, trying to get into the business or looking to get licensed, 
we are looking to get people on the team. I mentor people. I train people. I bring people that have zero transactions up. I have people that are doing one, two transactions every year or two. We bring them up, et cetera. So if there's somebody interested in partnering with somebody like me, hey, give me a shout, right? Marketing at a high level. There's 87 billion different things a realtor can do for marketing. And you can't focus on 87 billion different things and do them successfully. And you probably don't have deep enough pockets to handle uh, the costs of 87 billion different types of marketing. So I always recommend do a few things, maybe even do just one thing, but do that one thing or those few things extremely, extremely well. So I have no problem sharing what I've been doing. I've been doing a few things for a long time. I've been doing some things more recently. I've been doing email marketing for ages and ages, right? I've been sending out for the better part of a decade an e-newsletter, market updates, statistics, listings, listings of mine that I'm trying to advertise to an additional group of 20,000, 25,000 plus people to get my listing, uh, get my emails, right? right? Email marketing has been huge over time. What is problematic about email marketing is open rates, right? You might get, it used to be 10% was good. These days, I don't know if we're even getting a consistent 10% open rate. Now you send that out to 20,000 people, 10% is still not a bad total number, right. When we want something that's a whole lot better. So there's the email marketing. A big push is being made by myself and my team right now on social media, right? People like content. Sure. The sites, the Facebook, the Instagram, the TikTok, they like content. They like good content, right? Post market stats, market updates. Post funny items, little jokes, memes about real estate. Post nice. videos. Do I want to post videos of the $500,000 homes? I do, but they are not necessarily going to wow somebody, right? It's a regular house. Right. I'd like to post videos of the two, $3 million homes. Why? Those attract eyeballs. People love looking at those things. It gives them some idea that this $2 million property is available in Scottsdale, that this $3 million property is available in Laguna Beach. If nothing else, even if they're not shopping, it gives them inspiration. It gives them design inspiration. People can take their $500,000 home and they can make it look like an $800,000, $900,000 home. And they get a lot of ideas from these videos that I post. Right. What you see in the two, $3 million homes, right? You can easily take those concepts and apply them to your own house. And a lot of folks I find do that. Yeah, very nice. I mean, that I, I, I'm thinking in my mind as you say this, Cole, that like, and, it, and it's also an impetus to maybe down the road that, when they start looking at the, 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 the million dollar plus homes, you've already kind of planted that seed, right? You've already planted that seed that this is out there. This is the next level, you know, what, and, and if you're in, I'm in too, you know, and, and I can be that. hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, you know, you make a post on Instagram, you do a reel on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever the case is. And the new one I'm starting up is a YouTube shorts. You get viewers. Sometimes you get a bunch of likes and interactions. Sometimes you don't get that many likes. You don't get that much interaction. You're like, am I doing something wrong? But really more content is never a bad thing. I have people that I had no idea were watching my stuff, right? Because I don't check who the 2000 viewers are, right? I, it's just too tedious, right? But they never interacted. They never commented. They never messaged me. One day they'll contact me. Hey, we're looking for a house in West LA. We're looking for a house in Scottsdale. We're looking for a house in North County, San Diego. And we saw the videos you posted and we've been following you for a long time. I said, oh, that's great. I had no idea. So I, I tell folks out there, if you're going to go the social media route, and you're going to do some posts and you're going to do some funny content. And you're going to do some reels. Consistency is key and try and you know, elevate your content level. There you go. Yeah, I love it, you know, for sure. And there's a lot of value to that. Um, you know, the average realtor in the United States is 55, which always shocks me because that's around my age. So I feel like, oh, wow, I'm just the status quo. But, uh, it, you know, it, it's amazing, though, with the average realtor being that age and how many realtors I know at this age who don't take advantage of that right? They either feel like it's too much work. Now, there are a lot of them that move into that, but 
it's really the 28 to you know 50 age that takes advantage of that more or less and i and i wish and i and i know the the demographic is shifting like a lot more uh people in my age group are using i've been using social media for a long time i'm, I'm actually certified with blueprint with uh facebook you know i've been using these things for over 10 years but it, it'd be nice to see the the average realtor use that more often for sure real estate much like many other businesses is is a business where about 10% of the people do 90% of the business right. right a big chunk of the pie is taken up by a small number of of, of people right you got to be able to distinguish yourself all right. That's why the average income of a realtor in this country is, is pretty low. Yeah. I, you know, I, my best year was about 25 million. This year was around, it was hitting 20 million. Right. right. I'm trying to get to 200 million in career sales and, you know, maybe yeah. another year, year and a half, we'll get there. And this is an interesting tangent. Actually. I see some agents posting, I sold $2 billion in real estate. Right. No, you didn't. You were the broker or the designated broker and all the agents under you did, or you had a team of 40 people. And over the course of 20 years, you have right. you know, a little bit of false advertising. But the, the the folks that are 55 that are getting into real estate, again, it's kind of like me. I didn't do it when I was 55. I did it a long time ago. Yeah. But real estate can be, uh, it's kind of a jumping off. I finished my corporate career. Somebody goes into real estate after that, which is perfectly fine. You've got to grab the bull by the horns and run with it if you do that. You can't right. just switch and expect the business to come to you. Right. And I tell people that have this kind of, uh, you know, in the back of their mind, they're working a corporate job, they're working at an auto dealership, they're working at a semiconductor company, they're working in advertising, they're working in some sort of oil and gas, and they're going to retire. They're going to retire from that in five, seven, three years and whatnot, Right. I say to them, if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, if you are, can be a hustler, if you are honest, ethical, and, and loyal type of person, right? Get your license now, start building up the clientele, start building up the database, learn the skills so that you can hit the ground running at 55 or 50 or 45 or whatever yeah. the case might be. Sure. Don't just jump in blindly without a plan. Yeah, I Plan, what is it? A plan your attack? Attack your plan. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, absolutely. For sure. For sure. Well, we're getting kind of winding down towards the end of the show here, Cole. I do want to ask you how, if somebody wanted to list a home with you or, or, or even, uh, you know, maybe look at some homes in those wonderful areas that you work in, how would they get in touch with you? There's, there's a infinite number of ways to get a hold of me. Obviously they can give me a call anytime. Area code 480-600-2808. The website is the thesircargroup.com. Search my name, Koshik Sirkar, aka Ko. Search me, Google me. You'll find me on Instagram. You'll find me on Facebook. TikTok, I'm newer, but you'll still find me on there. Lots of ways to get a hold of me. People don't have to call me for a transactional reason, right? Call me, just chat, let's discuss things. And perhaps a transaction will occur somewhere down the line. Perhaps a transaction won't. But it, it's not a transactional business I'm in. I'm in the relationship business. Let's foster a relationship. There you go. So, Cole, every show I like to do this. Um, you know, I, I always say I'm the DJ and you're the hit record. I'm spinning hit records right now. And so we kind of like to hear what you, you know, kind of what's on your mind, either your mind, your heart, your soul that you'd like to share with our audience. It doesn't have to be about real estate. It could be about, you know, the different areas that you work in. Uh, could be about the weather in the OC, but it could be about real estate. So take us out and give us a good word. You know, there's a lot of good quality professional people in this business. And I implore every human out there that's watching this, right? I, I can't service every human who's going to watch this, right? Whatever you do for your real estate needs, go find the quality, honest, ethical, trusted people. I see an article practically every day where some sort of a real estate professional took somebody on a ride, scammed somebody, did something illegal, et cetera. Just do your due diligence and work with the good quality people. If you're looking for somebody in an area I don't service, I have plenty of recommendations. The best thing is ask for referrals from your friends and family. Do your due diligence. Work with good quality people. I love it. A great advice. And there's no reason in today's information age, we can't find good quality people. That's for sure. 100%. Co, yeah, Co, thanks so much for being on the program. Uh, I look forward to catching up with you over the next three, six, nine months and seeing how business is going. 
Uh, maybe the next time I'm out in Arizona or maybe even L.A., I go out there from time to time and love to catch up with you. Coach Sakar, the Sakar Group, thank you very much and have a great week. Thank you, sir. Take it easy. You too. 